Man, let's talk about fitness. All right. So, if you're in the market for smart watches or fitness trackers, and you are thinking about Fitbits or Apple Watches, maybe I'll talk about the Samsung Galaxy Watch Active 2 and Watch 3. I might talk about that in this video, but if I don't, oh well, because my main focus is really the new Fitbit Sense, Fitbit Versa 3, and the Apple Watch Series 6 if you have an iPhone. These are gonna be the best fitness trackers and smartwatches of 2020. So let's get into it. Here we have the Fitbit Versa 2. It's showing me my heart rate right now, my steps and my calories, the burn for the day. And keep in mind, the way Fitbit measures calorie burn is by uh, the amount of calories your body burns just by you existing. I think this is your BMR, but uh, it tracks the amount of calories through your steps, through your exercises, and adds it up to the amount of calories that you would typically burn throughout the day. And you do burn calories in your sleep, because as you sleep, it will also show you the amount of calories you burn in your sleep. At least I think it does. The Samsung Galaxy Watch did with the S Health and all that stuff, but calories are all inclusive in here. When you have the Apple Watch, it only shows you your active calories on the watch. It does not include your resting calories burned. If you want that data, you got to dig deep into the Health app. I'll show you actually in a little bit in this video. I'll show you the differences between the Fitbit app and the Apple uh, Health app. Two very different things. The Fitbit app is amazing. It has all your data there. It's very easy to find. Apple Health app, mm, not so intuitive, not so great. So, so here we have the Apple Health app. Right there, you can see my low heart rate notification, which is fine because I have good cardio. So that's okay for it to be that low. Don't worry about it. So right there, you have your active calories, your move calories, your exercise minutes, your stand hours from the Apple Watch activity ring. You have your body fat percentage and a bunch of data that I got from a third party app called Renfo. Renfo is a weight scale that I use in my home. You have your dietary energy and your ECG over here. So that checks for our AFib, arterial affibulation. Can't pronounce it, whatever. Moving on, you have your height, lean body mass, all from the Renfo app. You have your low heart rate notifications, your oxygen saturation, which will be in Watch OS 7 with the Apple Watch Series 6 because the Apple Watch Series 6 will have an SpO2 monitor to check your blood oxygen saturation levels. Something Fitbit has been doing, but they do it differently with, um, what's it called? Variations. So here you have your resting energy. This is what Fitbit calculates and adds to your active energy for a total amount of calories burned throughout the day on your watch display and on the front of the Fitbit app, which I'll show you after I'm done walking through this with you. You have your sleep data, which can be synced with other apps. I have a Fitbit uh, Apple Health Sync app that I use. It costs a little bit of money, but kind of worth it if you care about your data. Just scrolling through the whole health, Apple Health data has a lot of uh, data for your health tracking. Probably why it's not as organized as Fitbits, which I'll show you right now. So here is Fitbits app. Obviously you have the stuff in the front today, zone minutes, calories, miles, floors. You have to wait for the synchronization to complete for your data from your watch to sync to the app. You have uh, stuff you can edit on here as well. You can change the placement of these, which I'll show you in a little bit. You have your uh, little tips and tricks at the top. Today's tips is a nutrition tip. You can thumbs down that, thumbs up it. If it was helpful information, you can click learn more to learn more information about it. But now let's check out the app itself. So you do have the zone minutes, like I mentioned. You have your fat zone minutes, cardio and peak zone minutes. There is a recommendation or recommended amount of zone minutes you should be able to reach to meet your goals. You'll have a bar down there or an area down there where it says why the active zone minutes matter to your health. You can set goals for your active zone minutes or the settings, the little gear on the icon on the top right. You can edit the placements of your calories, miles, floors, and zone minutes to which one you want to be in front, the one you want to prioritize. You have your track exercise. You can change the goals of that to make it more than five times a day, less than five times a day. 
So you'll be able to do that in the gear icon. Then this will pop up right here for your goals and the auto recognized exercises. So right now it's showing me the exercise I did last week and I did some weightlifting and some bike riding, indoor bike riding that is. So it'll show you your zone minutes, your average heart rate, your peak heart rate will be right there in that little red arrow. Peak heart rate is 148. And then you have your calories burned down there and how this impacted your day via steps. You can share your data over here. You can pick a photo and it'll take a picture and add the data there. If you want to share it on Instagram or share it to the Fitbit community. So that's an option that you have on the Fitbit app, which is pretty cool. Um, moving along, I'm showing you my other workouts from last week. So you have your current heart rate there, that pulse aiding heart is your current heart rate, which is pretty cool that it shows you your live heart rate and how it changes. You have your sleep date over there, which is updated from the app. You can now show your wake up and bedtime, your different areas of sleep, such as REM deep sleep and how much you were awake during your sleep cycle, which is also pretty cool. This is Fitbit's native thing. This is what Fitbit is known for as their native sleep tracking. It's been pretty accurate for me so far, and I've been using it a lot. I would take off my Apple Watch, let it charge overnight, and use the Fitbit app or Fitbit Watch to sleep. So you have your sleep score here, and you can only see this data if you have Fitbit Premium, which is $10 a month. I think it's kind of whack that Fitbit is making you $10 a month to be able to see more in-depth data of your sleep tracking such as your resting heart rate while you're sleeping or your oxygen variation levels while you're sleeping. I'm not sure if this is actually through the premium uh, version where you see your oxygen variation, but low variations is usually a good thing. High variations are correlated with sleep apnea or breathing problems while you're sleeping. Here you can check every second of how your heart rate has been during sleeping because the Fitbit watch, unlike the Apple watch, does track your heart rate every second every second i was gonna say something else but i forgot so yeah that's the data with your sleep sleeping and sleep tracking in the fitbit very intuitive very simple i don't know how accurate the sleep scores are sometimes i'll wake up sluggish and i'll say i slept great and vice versa so i mean i still enjoy it i enjoy the ui i enjoy how it looks compared to the apple watches which i'll talk about in a little bit here you have your steps per hour you have a reminder that you have so and so steps remaining during the hour you can track your food here use the barcode takes a picture of the barcode and then the data from the food with calories carbs protein and fats will pop up on here you can track your macros there you can track your weight over there by using the fitbit um, weight scales or third-party apps that sync with fitbit you have your community here so you can talk to people in the community get motivated make some friends through fitbit compete with them you have some guided uh, programs. So I just got done showing you the two different apps. I may have talked about things I already wanted to talk about within those things of showing you the apps, but I really want to talk about the Fitbit Sense now and the Apple Watch Series 6 and their different features. So the Fitbit Sense comes with some new sensors as an EDA sensor, which tracks your stress levels. You can track your stress levels throughout the day. And the Fitbit app will have uh, recommendations such as meditation, some deep breathing to ease your stress and you can keep tracking your stress levels because you know having high stress levels is pretty bad for your health. It'll secrete the, what's it called? The stress hormone, cortisol. And that could be bad for your immune system if there's too much of that going on in your system. Uh, it can track your SpO2, blood oxygen, but this is nothing new with Fitbit. I'm just hoping that you could track it on the go like a pulse ox instead of getting variations in your sleep. It can track your skin temperature, but this won't be like your thermometer where you can check it every second. It just does your skin temperature variations while you sleep to help find early symptoms of an early sickness or ongoing sickness that might be happening slowly in your body. So by checking your different temperatures, if it stays at the 98.3 or whatever the variations may be, I'm sure it'll have it like the oxygen level variations where if it's a high variation, obviously you might be getting sick. If it's low variation, it's fluctuating where it should be, then you'll be fine. Um, there's also some other features that the Fitbit Versa 3 and the Sense have. They finally have onboard GPS, no more connecting to the phone to use the phone's GPS. You can finally track your runs and outdoor activities using the on-device GPS. This may affect battery life, but this is what we've been asking for from the Fitbit devices for a long time now. Apple Watch has been doing this, so that's very great to see. 
Um, the Apple Watch has had the GPS on here. The only thing I think that's new with the Apple Watch is they have some sort of uh, mental health tracking on there. I'm not sure if it'll be like stress tracking, but I've heard rumors that the Apple Watch Series 6 will be able to monitor your mental health. It will be able to do the blood oxygen, as I uh, mentioned earlier. It is bringing sleep tracking with its new Watch OS 7, but keep in mind that's a software thing, and this will be coming to the Apple Watch Series 5. It'll be coming to other Apple Watches that are compatible with Watch OS 7, and it's not like Fitbit, it's nowhere near as intuitive, not as much data. So it's just very simple that you slept this amount of time. It won't dive deep into your REM sleep and your deep sleep. You still have to use third party apps for that, which is stupid. I mean, Apple has all this tech, all this software optimization, all this new stuff they can do, but they refuse to do it and just keep it very simple. If they want to bring King as smartwatch king and fitness tracking king all on one smartwatch, they need to copy, not copy, but like get the ideas that Fitbit is doing or Samsung Galaxy Watch is doing. Speaking of Galaxy Watch, I'll just mention that in here. The Galaxy Watch 3 is already out. It has SPO2, blood oxygen tracking. There's been a couple people who've done videos on that, and it seems to be accurate and kind of inaccurate. Keep in mind, don't use these measurements on your watches for medical purposes. It's only there for your own reference. If you do need to see a medical provider, obviously go see your doctor and use some real devices that are, I mean, these are FDA approved, obviously, otherwise they wouldn't be on the watches. Um, the ECG app from the Fitbit device, Fitbit Sense, is still awaiting FDA approval. I think it's been uh, cleared for the US. So hopefully on release, it can work. Can you be able to use that ECG app? To check for AFib and all that other good stuff. Also, the Fitbit Sense has uh, low heart rate and high heart rate notifications. So if you're at a resting heart, if you're resting and your heart rate's getting too low, it'll notify you. If you're resting, your heart rate's too high, such as 120 beats per minute, then it'll notify you about that. So you can get that in check and try to figure out what's going on. So. Lots of new stuff here. It's exciting. Should you get the Apple Watch Series 6 with the Fitbit sensor, Fitbit Versa 3, that is up to you. If you are more into the fitness tracking and you want less smartwatch, obviously get Fitbit. It's got the same features as the Apple Watch Series 6 now. The only uh, downside is with iOS devices, you cannot send or reply text messages. You can only see it. You, can, you can't use the Fitbit Versa 3 or the Sense to answer phone calls and take them on the watch because it does have an added speaker now. So that's very unfortunate. But if you have an Android device, you'll be just fine replying to text messages and making phone calls off your watch. Uh, speaking of the Fitbit Versa 3 and the Sense again, you do have Google Assistant along with Amazon Alexa, but I can't imagine anyone using Alexa when you have the Google Assistant option because the Assistant option is a lot better. The Google Assistant is a lot better to me. So it'll be really cool to see how they implemented that on there. And it's on there because Google now owns Fitbit. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully it's a lot better than the Assistant is on a watch OS because on a watch OS, which is Google's version of smartwatches, Google Assistant is kind of buggy and laggy. So hopefully in this new Fitbit, the Google Assistant is very seamless and smooth and can answer questions and just do what the Google Assistant is meant to do, assist. So. Uh, if you're more into the smartwatch game, obviously, and you have an iPhone, obviously, get the Apple Watch Series 6. It has some new features on there, such as sleep tracking and uh, SPO2 monitor on there, and as well as tracking mental health. Not sure how they're going to do that yet. But if you're into more smartwatches and you like replying to texts on your iPhone and taking calls from your iPhone on your watch and you love doing that stuff, you want to just take your watch with you and have your music with you and just keep your phone in the car, then get the Apple Watch. But you can put stuff on the Fitbit Sense and Versa 3 if you have Spotify. And I think you should be able to download music into the watch. Not sure. It's been a complicated process, Fitbit and like music on the watch thing. But hopefully they figure something out with some software updates. But if you're more into fitness, Fitbit Sense makes sense. It makes sense. But if you are more into a smartwatch and you have an iPhone, Apple Watch Series 6, you have a Galaxy, Obviously, the Galaxy Watch 3, if you want more of a smartwatchy thing, if you have an Android phone. So, with that being said, that's the Fitbit talk. I'm ranting too much about these watches right now. So, I can't wait for the Fitbit Sense to come out. I low-key might get that and not get the Apple Watch Series 6 just because it offers more fitness stuff, and I'm more into fitness than I am into the smartwatch stuff. I could care less about replying to texts and answering phones for my watch like I'm 007. Even though it is nice, it's nice to have that, but I honestly care more about fitness data. So there's that. This is Meme Tech. If you haven't 
done it already, please hit that like button, subscribe, hit that bell icon for the next video, and stay tuned next time for another video about check. Thanks for watching. Take care.